Hey everyone, this is the Millionaire Hippies Podcast with your host, Boom Shika, where we chat about spirituality, business, and health. We all want to live self-actualizing, fulfilling lives with joy, prosperity, and gratitude. Let's go on this beautiful journey together. Hey everyone, it's Boom Shika here. I welcome to you to another episode of my podcast, The Millionaire Hippie Club. And I'm so excited that you're here. I'm always grateful when you take the time to listen to these little tidbits of hopefully wisdom that I've been passing on to you. Um, and I've been speaking a lot about my move to Chiang Mai, all the different things I'm doing here, all the different people I'm meeting, all the different connections I'm making. And it's very rare in life that you actually you know, plan something and you think I'm going to do something. And it turns out to be even better and brighter than what you imagine it to be. So when I first made plans to move to Chiang Mai, I imagined that I would go to this cheaper country. That was my main motivation, that it was cheaper. Also, it had a lot of different digital nomads here, so I thought I'd, I'd go to a mastermind once a week and I'd learn from these individuals. And I imagined that, you know, I mean, I always, I always loved Thailand. I love their food. And so I imagined I'd save money. I eat a lot of great food. I'd travel a little bit and I'd meet new people. You know, so that was my motivation in coming here. And it was a good motivation. It was a great idea. And I'm glad I did it. But when I actually landed here and, you know, I started going to all these meetups, going, doing all these different things that I was doing, I realized that I was going to get so much more from Chiang Mai than I ever imagined. In my head, I was going to be spending maybe 10, 12 hours a day in my apartment sitting and working. And it's actually turned out that it's completely the opposite. I work for a couple of hours a day, uh, and I do really good work. I mean, I'm intensely focused because I have very little time to waste. And so I'm doing this work, and I'm getting stuff done. But the rest of the time, I'm doing all of these amazing different things that I never, ever imagined, and I never even budgeted for. So I'm doing all these workshops. I'm going out to dinners and meetups with all of these amazing individuals, all these digital nomads, women, men. And it's just been a really, really amazing experience because, like I said, I imagined it to be a certain way, and it's turned out to be a hundred times better than what I imagined it to be. It's actually turned out to be one of the most useful experiences of my life, and I'm so grateful that I took this leap and decided to move to Chiang Mai for these beautiful six months. And it's been a month and a half already, so I came here October 1st, And I'm actually recording this podcast on November 12th. So it's been a month and a half. And it's been a roller coaster ride. I never imagined I'd meet so many people. I never imagined I'd learn so much about my body, my soul, my spirit, my voice, my creativity, my writing. I've learned so much about myself. I've been unsmudging all of the masks that I've I've put on over the years. And I've been revealing all of these authentic, real, true parts of myself that I haven't seen, I think, ever. Or if I did see them, it was a very long time ago when I was a child. Maybe even I was four or five was the last time I saw myself in that true form. It's been a long time because I've had to hide parts of myself due to culture, you know, due to parental suppression, whatever it might be. I mean, there's a lot of different reasons. I'm not blaming anyone for it. It's just the way it is. That's what life is all about. But what happened to me was that I thought that those masks were myself, you know, that was my true self. I had forgotten what my true, true self was really like. I had forgotten what I was all about. And it's the little things. I mean, for example, I'm a writer. I'm a writer. I am a writer. I know know I'm saying that over and over again, but... Even right now, I have a hard time when I say these words out loud, believing them, even though everyone around me that knows me knows that I'm a writer. And these are individuals that I meet for the first time, and they already know that I'm a writer. I'm writing a a novel for the National Novel Writing Month, which is you write 16, 67 words a day for 30 days, and you eventually end up with 50,000 words, which is the size of an average novel. Most people end up adding more to it, obviously, but the... The tenet of it is to finish a novel in those 30 days. Because most people, they spend their time writing, but they never actually really finish anything. And so the whole point is to finish. And so for the first time, I'm actually doing this challenge, and 
I'm writing every single morning and I've just been loving it, loving every single moment of it. I've been loving the writing, I've been loving the creativity of it, I've been loving all of it and I've realized that I am happiest when I'm writing. I mean, there are other things that make me really happy like yoga and travel and shopping um, and fashion and food. I mean, there's so many other things that make me really happy as well. But writing is one of those things where I really get into flow mode and I love every single moment of it. I, I, I truly believe in my heart of hearts and I want to believe in my heart of hearts that I have a talent for it. I'm a great, good writer and I have... A gift and I want to share that gift with the world. For the longest time I I was told obviously that you know you're never gonna make money from writing so you should focus on something that you're going to make money from and I really feel sad for that little girl who was told that over and over again I wish I could go back and say no I am a writer and I mean I'm going to make little of money from it it doesn't matter if people don't make money from it because I will because I <sighs> I really believe that if I had, um, you know, and even now I believe if I do it properly and if I publish my stuff and I share my writing with the world, I know that it will result, not that I'm looking for monetary compensation, but I know that I can, I, I am the kind of writer that people will look at, that people will read and appreciate. Uh, and I'm not writing for anyone else right now, I'm writing for myself because I want to write, because I have to write, because it's something that I have to share, a story that's inside of me, so many stories are inside of me that I want to share, and so right now I'm writing for myself, but I want to share it with the world because that is the ultimate, I don't know how to say, it. it's just what it is, it's about, I believe it's about storytelling. I think we're all, human beings in general are storytellers and we want to share our stories with the world. That's how we look at the world. That's how we interpret the world. That's how we interact with the world. And we use our stories to interact with the world. We use our stories to connect with the world. And I want to use my story not only to entertain people because books are a source of entertainment. They're a source of part, pastime. But more so, I want to use my books to be a source of inspiration. One of the latest, the, the book that I'm writing right now in the novel writing month is about the ca caste system. Now, the caste system is just a part of the book, but I'm writing about it because I want to delineate the classes that have developed in this world and how certain people are treated like they're inferior just because of the fact they were born into a caste system that is completely outdated anyways. So I wanted to kind of include a bit of it to, you know, just bring it to people's attention that this happens in the world, even though we don't realize it does, or even though we pretend that it doesn't, it actually exists very rapidly and rapidly in the world. So, so that's how I believe my writing is going to be. That's what writing is to me. It's about inspiration. It's about teaching. I love to teach people. I'm doing a workshop right now and I'm loving just being in that zone where I can impart some knowledge to someone and change their life in a tiny little way. And a book helps me do that as well. You know, if a person reads something and they learn something from my book, even if it's a tiny little bit of information, I think that book has served its purpose. You know, if I can teach them something, I've changed them in a minuscule manner even, and that matters to me. You know, that really does matter to me. And that's what my writing is all about. So, like I said, my journey has been all about discovering parts of myself and one of the major parts, like I said, has been rediscovering and believing that I am a writer. The second part has been rediscovering and believing that I'm an actress. Now, I used to act when I was a child and I loved it and I was funny and I was charismatic, I, at least in my mind. I loved it. That was the main point of it. I loved being on stage. I loved performing. Um, but for some reason, I started hiding that part of myself, that beautiful, bright person that I was. And I started hiding and becoming a wallflower. I started. I became really shy, and I started hiding. I, you know, be the person in the background. And I don't want to do that anymore to myself. Um, I want to be the person who goes out in the open and just declares herself to be the beautiful person she is in front of a crowd on stage. 
And so that has been another rediscovery for me. It's been a really, really intense rediscovery because I did not realize that I had been hi hiding that part of myself for so long. Because I've been hiding that part of myself for so long, it had actually become like a shadow of my true self. And so when, when you know, parts of yourself become shadow, like what happens is that you start acknowledging it or projecting it or getting angry at it in other people. So, for example, for me, um, if you take the example of being a writer, when I'm not writing, I get really, really angry and I stop reading. Because I am jealous of people who are who are writing and who are getting published. So I don't want to read other people because it just brings up my own stuff about, oh, I'm not writing. Same thing with acting. When I am not acting, which is for a long time, I stopped watching movies uh, and I stopped watching things that I liked because I did not want to see other people doing what I really wanted to do myself. Now that I'm back into it, and you know, back into writing, back into acting, I have no issue watching other people or reading other people's stuff, watching uh, other people acting because I'm doing it myself and there are no shadow demons preventing me from experiencing it wholly. So I hope that this kind of helps you as well. If something is bothering you, you know, if you are discovering parts of yourself or if you feel like you're discovering a part of yourself and you're noticing that a shadow is coming up or you're projecting or you're getting angry, there's a reason for it. So notice it, journal through it, and I'm always here to listen. So if you have any questions, you're always welcome to message me anytime. My name is Boom Shikha, and this is the Millionaire Hippie Podcast. If you're interested, you can join my free Facebook group, the Millionaire Hippie Club. If not, I'll talk to you guys the next time around. Bye for now.